Well, what happens when your garden doesn't seem to work out or something goes wrong that you can't control? Despite the wind today, I'm going to try to encourage you. We've had a good gardening year, but we've had some challenges. This year has been unlike any other gardening year I've ever experienced. And it's caused me some problems, it's caused some delays, it's caused some frustration, but it doesn't have to cause me so much frustration that I give up or I think I'm a bad gardener. Let's talk about how to handle gardening frustration. The missing hole represents frustration. The missing hole represents things that, well, I couldn't really control. I couldn't control the amount of pest pressure. I could try, and we tried, but even though we eradicated the aphids from this part of the garden, look what it caused. Even though we eradicated, the damage was done. This is the only plant that we, we uh, saved that survived the aphid, aphid attack. We got a harvest out of it, and it looks like we might get another harvest right in there. That's broccoli. I'm sitting here next to this bed where I've had some trouble. This bed was trouble for me uh, for a number of reasons. Um, reasons that I really couldn't control. When we garden, there are things that we can control. We can control how much fertilizer we give. We can control the condition of the soil to some degree. We can control what plants we choose to grow and when we start them, and we can control a lot of things. Uh, most gardeners want to control everything. They want everything to be perfect. They want everything to go according to schedule. And they want everything to look beautiful. But it doesn't always work that way. Because in gardening, there are those elements that we can't control. I can't control the weather. I mean, it, you just can't control the weather. Weather is a game of averages. We look at our average last frost date, our average first frost date, and we make our plans according to those within the zone, the growing zone that we live in. And usually, because it's an average, usually that works. This year was way outside the averages, this year and last year. So what happened? Um, everybody, I think, knows about the big epic freeze we had here in Texas last winter. It got down to 14 degrees which Fahrenheit, which for my area is almost unheard of. And it stayed below freezing for a good part of a week, maybe a little bit more. And that devastated citrus, devastated fruits, it devastated gardens, it killed everything off. But it also seems to have had a, a, an impact on the pests, the, the bugs, the insects. Uh, something happened. I don't have a direct correlation. I don't have a scientific reason for it. But the following spring and summer, we had more pest pressure than I've ever seen in my garden ever. We had aphids. That's why there's a blank spot here. Aphids came and destroyed some of these brassicas uh, so much that I had to harvest early. We were able to control those aphids, but they came in such numbers they had done a, a, all their damage. I, I couldn't control that as quickly as I wanted to, and so these plants got compromised. Uh, we had all kinds of army worms. Uh, we had a new pest in my grapevines, the grape, uh, grapevine skeletonizer caterpillar. Oh, it was awful, and I've never seen these before. Also, because of the freeze, we had a big honeybee kill. So there weren't as many pollinators in the garden this year, and that was all something you, I can't control that. No one can control how many honeybees there are. All right, so fast forward through the summer, through all the pestilence we had, all the things we couldn't control, uh, we come here now to winter again. Well, we're having freezes again, and uh, right now, in fact, last night we, had, we were down to freezing. But here's the deal. Winter didn't arrive here until the middle of December. Normally, we have a gradual uh, decline from the heat of summer uh, we really don't have a fall here. It just goes from August and September when it's 100 degrees outside and, you know, high humidity. And it just slides down into winter through October, November. And we didn't have that this year. It stayed hot into October, well into November. And my plants, they were so confused. I can't control that. Some of the most confused plants in my garden were my fig trees. It's middle of December and there's still leaves on these. And... Well, they had leaves on them and were trying to fruit well into the winter. The problem I faced with my fig trees is the epic freeze last winter I thought had killed them off. But knowing that some figs can be hardy way down into the teens, I left them. I didn't do anything with them. 
And sure enough, they all started to come back with the exception of maybe a couple of them. So my 30 fig trees or so, potted plants, uh, began to grow a little by little and show these green buds here at the end of all of the wood that I kept testing and kept seeing some sap in them. But that winter stunted them so much I wasn't able to do my, my uh, uh, dormant pruning on these because I wanted to see if they were actually alive. Some little bits of them are dead, but for the most part, my figs, I mean, they've got leaves on them. Look at that. They started to grow back. So I was, I was not able to do my shaping prune last year. So my fig trees, they're kind of unruly. They're out of control. And the little growth that they did put on is not always in the place I want it to be. So that was something I couldn't control. And so now my fig trees are kind of ugly. And well, you know what? When stuff goes wrong in the garden you can't control, usually it's just a matter of waiting until the next season. I can correct this the next season. I can deal with my garden beds the next season by planting new crops and starting over. Gardening is something you have to think of in long term. You gotta think of it in terms of years. You know, two or three years ahead of time. Especially when you're dealing with perennials and fruit, think about it in terms of, you know, long-term fruit, long-term rewards. I'm not going to get fruit from my apple trees way over there for three or four years. I will put my grapevines in and I knew I wasn't going to get fruit for at least three years. You have to think long-term. When stuff comes up that adds another year to your gardening misery, <laughs> to your weight, hey, just take it in stride. You're going to be around, hopefully. It's, your garden's going to be around. Just keep caring for it. Just keep taking care of your garden. Roll with it. Don't expect to have a perfect garden. I think that's one of the saddest little rutabaga plants I've ever seen. Root crops shouldn't look like this. It's, uh, it's ugly down in here. It's crispy. It's frost damaged. It is bug damaged. There's so much going wrong over here that I could be discouraged and frustrated. And yeah, I kind of am. It froze last night, but look what I found there. You see that? Aphids. Still got aphid problems. So I'm going to have to deal with this. There are aphids in my rutabagas. Lots and lots of aphids. Aphids in the middle of December. Friends, that's discouraging. You know what? It's okay. If I have to, I just give this crop to the aphids. I let this crop be a trap crop. The aphids aren't bothering my kohlrabi on the side. They're not bothering my radishes over there. You can actually use this as a trap crop. Just sacrifice it. It's okay. You can plant again next year. But what you can't do is lose hope. There are so many aphids in here. I hate these things. That's so, so discouraging. But, again, have the right frame of mind. Let these rutabagas just be for the aphids. Treat them if you want to, but I mean, that's a lot of plants to treat in the middle of December. They don't look so good. They don't look like they're going to come to fruition. I'll just leave them there and let make sure the aphids stay right here. And in a couple days, maybe, a couple weeks, maybe, uh, if I notice them spreading, I'll then treat and take the whole thing out. But right now, just chill. It's going to be okay. You know, Jesus taught that you can't control what's coming tomorrow. You can't worry about things way off in the future because they're out of your control. Uh, you know, by worrying, you can't change the color of your hair. Well, by worrying, you'll get gray hair. But what we can deal with is what we have in front of us today. And in front of me today, I have a garden that's kind of ugly. I have a garden that has some pests in it. I have a garden that has had abnormal weather such that it didn't know how to respond to the freezes and it got damaged. Well, I nothing I can do about that except roll with it. So I'm going to appreciate what I get from the garden. The kohlrabi here starting to get bulky down at the bottom. That's encouraging. There's a beautiful purple down there. So we're going to have something from the garden. And so I'm going to, I'm going to resolve to be thankful for that. And I think that's how you handle you know, a frustrating year. You'd be thankful for what, what you get. I got a small cauliflower or two. Uh, actually, I got three small cauliflowers off my compromised, aphid-infested, uh, not handling winter very good cauliflower plants. That's encouraging. 
I've got five heads of cabbage over there I could be thankful for. One of them's got cabbage worms in it. Well, what are you going to do? I can't dig in there and get that cabbage worm out until I harvest it and cut it open. Am I going to be frustrated about that? That's a little annoying, but I got some cabbage out of it. So if you have the right perspective, if you don't expect perfection from your garden, you do much better. There's weeds in here, tons of weeds. And some people think that if you've got weeds in your garden, you're not a good gardener. That's nonsense. I don't know any gardener that doesn't have weeds in their garden unless you're growing hydroponically. And then it's a whole nother ball of wax. So, you know, it's not going to be perfect and that's okay. Expectations are often uh, way out there in the, in the realm of uh, impossible to achieve. And oftentimes you watch YouTube gardeners who show you their gardens and they only show you the good stuff. Well, you know what? The bad stuff sells too. We all need to see it and we all need to be encouraged by it. Another bit of frustration that happened because of this abnormal weather is my apple trees. They're supposed to have dropped their leaves and gone to sleep a bit, but they haven't. I'm going to have to strip these and induce dormancy so that I can do what I need to do with these come the spring. It's only a couple of months and they're going to be wanting to grow again. But, uh, yeah, so a little, I mean, that, that throws six months to a year of delay in my plans in shaping these apple trees, forcing out their main scaffolds. Well, that's frustrating. But, you know what? I can be happy. I have apple trees. It's all a matter of perspective. This stuff here, Yod Fa, Chinese broccoli. I harvested some of this and I ate it. I reviewed it for you and showed you how I was going to cook it. Immediately after that video, this stuff became real hard, real fibrous, because it was so unusually warm. And so my harvest, I wasn't able to take advantage of it because it bolted. It went to seed so quickly that I couldn't use it quickly enough or efficiently enough. So, you know, that's a lost crop, right? No, have the right attitude and say, all right, wanted to bolt. It's unusually warm. There are millions of bees around. Let's get some seed from these things. Let it go to seed. And then I can harvest these little seed pods all up and down. Yeah, we can make something good out of something that went wrong. Sometimes you can do that. Here's another problem. I had to bring my citrus in because it froze. And so you see some citrus. It's got leaves. Nice and healthy leaves nice and healthy leaves. This key lime is naturally a little more yellow. But then I've got these guys. These guys, they did not handle the sharp shift from warm temperature to freezing cold. They didn't handle it very well. And when a citrus gets... Citrus trees, they're temperamental. They'll just drop their leaves if you look at them wrong. And that's what these two did. But they're still alive. In fact, that one's full of blossoms. So, I can look at it as frustration, or I can just be glad that they're still alive and they're going to come back for me. The big idea of this video is just to, well, we gardeners have to chill out and not expect perfection. Perfection in gardening is pretty much an unobtainable goal. We have to be okay if there's some things that aren't right, if we've got some weeds. We've got to be okay if we've got some pests. It's going to be all right. Sometimes we have to learn that, well, we have to start over on something. It's okay to start over. Sometimes we have to learn that it's okay to pull up some plants and let the soil rest. Sometimes it's okay when there are bare spots on the ground. Sometimes you can't control everything. You've been encouraged by this talk. Uh, I hope you've seen some things in here that maybe uh, cause a light bulb to go off. If you've been struggling and striving to get that perfect garden, you finally realize, you know, I don't have to labor for that. I don't have to, I don't have to be a slave to perfectionism. It's frustrating. That will drive you crazy. What won't drive you crazy is just rolling with your garden growing with your garden, responding to your garden here and there where you need to, and just enjoying what the garden gives you back. Hey, thanks for joining us on Black Dumbo Southern Gardening today. 
I hope we've been encouraging and I hope we've earned your subscription. Please hit that bell notification icon so that you'll be notified when we publish videos. And follow us to see our spring gardening and how we handle all these pests and what we're going to do about it. If we really are going to tackle those aphids or we're just going to let them go. Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and hey, happy gardening to you. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.